This is how I keep track of all of my watercolor paints. So you can see on these two little pieces of watercolor paper, um, they are both labeled Windsor and Newton. That is important, and I'll explain more into that in a second. And these are put in no particular order, just because later on I don't want to have to be worried about, oh, I bought a new blue and I don't have any more room in the blues type of issues. So I just have them in no particular order. This is really helpful for when I don't know what a particular color is in my palette. I mainly know where everything is, but sometimes I might refill and not remember what the name is, especially if it's very similar. So then I can just take a scrap piece of paper and do a swatch from my palette and compare it to these swatch cards. Now here are the Winsor Newton ones that I have. I also have some from Holbein and one from Daniel Smith. And I know it's kind of pathetic just to give one its own card, but I fully intend on buying some more Daniel Smith in the future, so I figured just get ahead of it. And I actually went to Blick the other day and I grabbed some new colors, so I'm going to swatch them right here on camera. I like to do them straight from the tube so that I know um, what the color is for certain. Now, they do tend to just kind of explode sometimes when you open them. So just make sure that you have a nice spot somewhere in your palette uh, ready. And so that is much better. I will just take my brush and graze the top of my paint tube. I might just put a little more in my palette there. There we go. And then cap that back right away. But I do have some on my brush. And so I make sure that I get a nice um, gradient on there. I'm actually going to take just a little more to make it a little darker. And so that looks like a good amount. And then immediately, I still have this in my hand so I know which one it is, I want to label it. So I'm just going to write on here really quick. Okay, so I got that one done. I've got a few more, so I figured just why not do them on camera. So this one actually did not explode, which is nice for me. So I'm dipping into that with a clean brush. That is very important. And I do like to just do the colors at random because um, then I know that I don't have to worry about uh, two of the same colors next to each other. So I actually have another green that I'm going to swatch. But since my writing kind of went over a little bit, now I don't have to worry because I know that that one is Windsor Green. And this one is Davies Gray. And I have that on there. And the parentheses are actually on um, these tubes. So let me just bring back the Windsor Green for a second. So it says in there, parentheses, yellow shade. So I just want to make sure that I write that in there as well. Make sure my brush is nice and clean. And then I've got one more green to swatch. And 
again, just like to make sure I get some uh, variation in this gradient. So this um, is really helpful. It is a little time consuming um, if it's the first time that you're doing it and maybe you have a lot of um, different colors. But once you have the bulk of them down, so that I did all of these in one go and then I realized that I had a few more colors um, that I got later so I just swatched them as I went. Um, and, you know, this video, I did three of them because I got these three new colors the other day. So, yeah, and I made sure that I knew it was the correct one because I was taking it right from the tube. And that is everything. Oh, one more thing is that I'm writing in just a micron because it is um, waterproof ink. And for some, if I were accidentally to get some water on there, I wouldn't want it to run or anything. So, yeah, if you have any questions, let me know. And I found this really helpful. I hope that this little tip helps you in your watercolor painting. Thanks for watching.